if I was like a sexual predator or something like that, if I was like, the other thing, I mean, you know, I'm just might as well address all the stuff that I just like really just try to ignore because I'm like, this is so stupid, but you know, if people are going to keep bringing it up, let me address it. Me dating a pedophile. I never, you know what? I went on a date with a pedophile. Yes. Met him on Tinder. One date. We went out on St. Patrick's Day two years ago. Like, uh... Oh, so I'm gonna apologize for not feeling comfortable meeting up with somebody. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm gonna be doing another episode of Highlight and Shade. This is my series where I put on makeup and talk about YouTube drama or world drama or whatever the hot topic of the moment is that people seem to care about. So this is an impromptu video. And again, I'm really sorry that it is so echoey in here. I haven't gotten my rug put up. There has been so much YouTube drama and stuff that I've just been filming and trying to get my videos pre-filmed for next week so and still unpack my house so the rug thing has kind of taken a back toll for the next few days but I'm gonna try and get the echoing out of here because I was like comparing it to my last videos and it's it's annoying to me, but uh, so Trisha Paytas has responded uh, to Nikocado Avocado in true Trisha Paytas form. I watched basically a 43 minute video of deflecting, not really taking blame, making excuses, everything but just being like, you know what, I was an asshole and I messed up and I'm sorry. Um, she gets into some really weird points about like, she talks for the first 10 minutes just about nonsense that doesn't matter. I am not deflating. I have been dealing with a very traumatizing breakup with someone I was so fucking in love with. Look, if I was like a sexual predator or something like that, if I was like, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure he's gay, but like, and honestly, I think that's even why I like connect more. I was connected with like gay guys a lot more. I don't know what it is. Like, you know, when like people like freaking, oh my gosh, I'm getting so much. Like, even if there was something I did that was worthy of going to prison, which the thing I'm about to talk about is like, really? My YouTube friend put out this like really, there was a good Instagram thing that he's like, you know, as much as, you know, it's good to like humble people and also like, you know, when someone's in the wrong, call them out, especially if it's something illegal or like something that's really like you know that's you're really hurting other people like like her breakup which was over two months ago and she, i guess she seems to think that like we don't know that her and jason broke up but we do and we don't care anymore that is old news we don't need videos on the fact that you've broken up or not so i'm gonna start putting makeup on if you have never watched this series i put makeup on and i always have it all listed down below because i don't really talk about the products that i use and if i miss anything ask me in the comments and i will do my best to remember what i used <laughs> okay so let's get into her video i was kind of not knowing if i should do like a reaction video where i watch it while i do my makeup but i kind of just wrote points down and i'm gonna insert clips about the points that I want to talk about because there were it, it was such a long video and there were certain points where I was just like what are you talking about why are you bringing this up this is not even a point it could have been a short and simple video we know that's not Trisha's thing so I kind of want to give like a little timeline if you haven't watched any other videos on this or my other video I do have a video on this whole scenario that I will link above if you want to kind of get the entire backstory with all the details. But I am going to give a little context because a lot of people are starting to talk about this topic, but it kind of got overshadowed by the James Charles and Tati drama. So essentially on May 10th, Nikocado Avocado uploaded a video about an experience he had with Trisha Paytas about how she basically made plans to meet up with him and he flew from Colombia to LA to do like a collab video or two collab videos and he had DMs he had like the video version of DMs which you cannot edit like like pictures you can edit okay that was supposed to be a lighter color but that wasn't and he basically talks about how him and Trisha Paytas made plans to meet up he was gonna fly to LA and they were gonna do mukbang videos together because he is a mukbang channel if you have never heard of him basically he exposes her for being an asshole and leading him on he flies to LA and 
she just ghosts him never responds which is so shitty especially because he was a youtuber with around 50,000 subscribers and she had like millions at the time this was about two years ago now nikocado avocado now has over a million subscribers i think he has almost two million actually and i didn't know this in my first video but he said his reasoning for waiting two years is he did not want to be known as the guy who exposed trisha paytas he wanted to build a name for himself on youtube and also he was like a fan of trisha so i think he he also kind of wanted her to redeem herself but she never did and she still hasn't she's just honestly trisha paytas is just a crappy person in my opinion i think she is trisha paytas just is ignoring this after this video is published it's getting a lot of views not as many as if james charles stuff wasn't going on right now with tati but it's getting a lot i believe the video has like over a million views on it Probably even more than that now. I haven't really checked back, but she ignores it and she proceeds to make like a mukbang video I think in her car like eating Italian food or something like that and She's just ignoring it. This is on May 11th a day after his video was released and people are pressuring her online Everywhere on her Instagram on her YouTube. She even like disables comments on all of her videos I think or at least all of her videos that she has recently uploaded because no one cares about anything that she is talking about unless she's addressing what she did to Nick. The next day on May 12th, Trisha uploads another video and she's deflecting even more, or not deflecting, she's ignoring even more. She uploads a video talking about, yes, we broke up and she's like crying in the thumbnail and it's like, girl we freaking knew we've known this for months and you're addressing it now like no one cares anymore we were just like okay they broke up and they didn't talk about it that's cool you know it's their life you don't have to talk about your breakup if you don't want to and now she's addressing it conveniently at this time and you know what a good sis life of the free spirit noticed her breakup video and her h3 h3 video she was also having drama with some other channel that about like body shaming or something Thing. those were both filmed on the exact same day i'm gonna put screenshots of the two pictures so her h3 h3 video came out on like may 5th or something like that and then her breakup video came out on may 12th and she filmed those both the same day in <laughs> life of the free spirit put this on her twitter and i was like oh my god and she was like who the hell plans a mental breakdown video and like uploads it a few days later like this is so weird and it was like perfect i can upload this today i have like a crying mental breakdown video to hopefully distract people from the shittiness that is me and i'm just like holy crap because the reason you know that she filmed them on the same day is she's wearing the same like white off the shoulder shirt her hair looks exactly the same she's in the same exact position on the floor in her kitchen like everything about it it could have been clips from the same exact video and i was just like oh my gosh that that's crazy she keeps her mental breakdown videos and when she's totally past the little mental breakdown stage where she's crying and so sad usually when you have a fit of crying about whatever is going on in your life a few days later you have a lot clearer of a mind and you probably wouldn't post something like that online but nope trisha keeps them on lock in her in her hard drive just in case something like this happens so she can just you know deflect the situation i thought that was insanely funny oh my gosh and then we get to yesterday it is the 14th of may today but on the 13th of may Trisha uploaded a video, I believe it said, called I'm Cancelled Again. And it's a 43 minute video of trash. <laughs> Honestly, I watched this video on like speed 1.5. I was going to do a speed 2, but I cannot understand her when she talks when it's that fast because she mm, like messes up her words a lot. And I don't, I hate how Trisha acts like she doesn't know who other YouTubers are. She was like, oh, I think that, you know, some guy named iNab or iNabber made a video about this about me. And she just plays it like, I don't even know what's going on. He said, and then my other friend that does YouTube, he was like, I, I saw like, 
someone like I nab did a video or something or I don't I nab her or something did a video like I nab her is a huge youtuber and she acts like she doesn't know who these people are she also acts like she doesn't know who Nick is she like every time she would mention him she'd be like Nick Ocado Ava Ava Nick Ocado like she would act like she doesn't know who she is and I'm like girl stop playing stupid you know exactly who these people are so I hate that she acts like because she was trying to say oh this is not a big deal my manager and my friend were like we didn't even know you were in any drama because all of the James Charles stuff we didn't even see and she was like oh yeah I think someone named Inab made a video about me I'm like who the fuck is Inab everyone knows Inabber and we know you know Inabber because he is he's at a level like you he is a big youtuber that is respected in the youtube community like stop acting like you're so out of touch with other youtubers i hate that about her and it's just like a way for her to make it seem like i don't even know what's going on i'm innocent and it's i can see right through it it's so frustratingly annoying that she always does this i've seen her do it in other scenarios where she's involved in drama where she likes to act like she has no clue what is going on in the world. She doesn't know or realize that other people are talking about her. It's like, girl, YouTube is your career. You know who's on YouTube. You know who is on YouTube. You know who is big on YouTube. You know all of this stuff. I'm just like, what the hell? And the one thing that was really annoying at the end of the video, she even starts talking about the James and Tati drama. Like, that is worse than what she did. She's just like, oh, this is like a big issue. I'm like, girl, stop talking about James and Tati. That's already old news at this point. I'm just like, you will, she is doing everything she can to not talk about this situ situation. It took her like 13 minutes to even mention what was going on. And she never mentions Nick by name. I believe she never mentions him by name. So she starts, okay, after she rambles for literally 13 minutes about her projects, her breakup with Jason, her her Bo Derek braid wig, which by the way, Bo Derek was inspired by black women, so stop acting like you were inspired by Bo Derek because girl, just stop. Just give the freaking credit to black women. You know what? If white women who wore black hairstyles would just fucking give credit to black women, they probably wouldn't care as much because it's always, oh, I'm gonna wear this really beautiful black hairstyle and then act like I saw it on Kim Kardashian or Bo Derek. Like, it's tired, it's stupid. Just give some fucking credit where credit is due. That is a whole other topic, but she mentioned that in her video and I'm just like, stop saying Bo Derek. Yes, we all know she wore the goddamn box braids in like the 70s, but they're not even called Bo Derek braids, okay? <laughs> so after all of this, 10 to 13 minutes of just babbling on she finally starts talking about the situation and she's shook she's like oh let's pull up the dms and she's scrolling through and what i find is so funny is she's scrolling through but her phone is literally like this far away from the screen and she's reading it like this so like you can't really see what is on the 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 text she doesn't show it close to screen like nick Acado avocado does and it's also funny to me because in the previous years, she was showing DMs where she she cut out her messages to make it look like he was talking to himself by himself. She never responded. And it's just like, girl, now they're there all of a sudden. Oh, so so she just exposed herself as a liar in that regard. And she's talking about these messages and oh it's just so annoying everything she does with these messages she's going through and like she reads them the exact same messages that he read about them like making plans to meet up he's gonna fly there on tuesday she says oh yeah let's let's film uh two mukbangs or one mukbang and we'll do a vegan meal and a non-vegan meal it'll be so fun she admits to saying all of this on her thing but the way like the way she describes why she said what she said she was like oh i was just protecting myself i said OMG, what yes well, well i've been watching you cover warriors amazing i just adore you he's like my boyfriend's Colombian. would you want to collab as soon as next week i don't know if you see my videos but i'm a vegan and boy it'd be so fun to eat something that i said hell yeah i'm pretty i'm actually pretty free next week what day are you thinking like whatever you know what i mean and this is january 9 2017 best light deals tuesday i said i can make that work we should we do a two-day shoot like just kind of asking the stuff and so it sounds great this is and that's the last night last thing i talked to him was just Oh, should we make it a two? I can say I can probably I can make that. I said I can make that work. Best flight deals Tuesday. So, you know, be vegan food on mine with you and non-vegan shit on yours, or just stuff ourselves. That's what I, that's the last thing I said to him on January 9th. So he said on the 9th, this is legit happening. 
the, uh, at six o'clock. Then he said, I'll buy the ticket tomorrow for Tuesday. I'll probably stay in LA three to four days so we could film on two different days to one week. I'm contacting a few friends to see where I can stay. This is so exciting. Good morning. I'm looking at my tickets now. Can you please let me know which days are free for you? Is weekend better than weekday? I want to get the tickets day looking at the week of the 16th through the 23rd. So he's looking, he's looking at tickets now on, on January 10th and I haven't responded because I'm like, you know, at this point, you know, here's the thing. People have come to this. Oh God, this is, if this is my problematic scandal, then okay, so be it. Um, so he's, he's saying, I'm looking at tickets now. Can you please let me know which days are free for you? Is weekend better? I'm not responding. So I'm 40. And then I, I third Tuesday, and what part of LA? Sorry for all the questions. So I'm not responding because I'm like, at this point, people are sending me videos of him, and I just I don't feel comfortable. And here's the thing: when I feel a little uneasy about a situation, whether I think someone's like using me, you know, I'm very guarded because there have been so many people who have used me and stuff like that. And I had a bad issue years ago with someone else who like just constantly wanted to like collab club and wouldn't take no for answers. So I was just I've, I've always been really scared. I've had bad experiences with people going cuckoo on me for saying like, hey, I can't do it, like. I just pretty much don't text anyone back. And this has happened. I'll like freely admit this. And I mean, they can say whatever. I mean, I feel like, I'm actually, I mean, there's just so many names. There's happened with so many people. Like, I'm coming to LA, let the blood soak up. Like, you know, things come up. <laughs> Family stuff, you know, taking care of yourself. You know what my therapist said to me today? He said, you you should be your number one priority. You should be your number one priority. Because I actually told him I was going to take a little social media break. And he's like, you know what? If you think that's what you need and the signs are there and you can afford it, you know, to get off, you know, take off your job or whatever like that, like, you know, do that. You know, I'm, he was put whatever it is, put yourself as a priority first, you know? That that's what he told me. And I was like, and I I kind of always felt this way. I was like, you know what? Yeah, like you put yourself as a priority first. If she said she was like guarding herself, and I'm just like, how are you guarding yourself? You're literally asking him what days he wants to meet in LA and what videos he wants to film. If you were guarding yourself, you would be like, oh yeah, I would like to meet with you maybe, but like let's FaceTime and maybe you can bring a friend and I can bring a friend and we'll do it in public or just like we'll do it at a studio or something like that if that is how you protect yourself. If you totally feel uncomfortable, you just say, you know what, I don't really feel comfortable. Um, I don't really want to do this. So her, like most of her defense in this video is she was scared and she didn't feel comfortable meeting up with him, which that is totally fine. If you, I understand as a woman, if you don't want to meet up with a man that you don't really know, but there is a certain way to handle things and you don't lead people on and say, yeah, we're going to meet up and let them literally fly to another country just to not meet up with them. Like that is not right. <laughs> One of her other defenses and this was just like, it's like the Gabriel Zamora thing with Tati. He, he's kind of like, oh, there's gay people in the world who aren't allowed to be gay and they're getting killed for it. So I'm using that to invalidate what you're saying and saying your pain Tati is not as valuable and it's just like, yes, there are people in the world dealing with worse things, but that doesn't take away how someone's feelings about what they're going through, no matter how big or small. Like everyone deals with things in their own way and everyone's pain is valid if they feel it. You can't tell people their feelings aren't valid even if you don't agree with it, even if you wouldn't feel that way in that situation. It's just not right. She kind of is saying like, well, I'm not that bad because I'm not a pedophile. She literally said like, oh, there's people out there who are like pedophiles and they're not canceled. Like uh, the Romeo Lacoste guy and Woody Allen. She says, oh, and like Woody Allen isn't canceled. And I'm just like, that doesn't make it right. And yes, there are pedophiles out there. But she she was like kind of insinuating that we're acting like she's as bad as a pedophile and she knows she's not. So why do we even care what she did? That's what she was saying. Like, oh, what I did isn't that big of a deal. So why do you care? Because there's worse people out there than me. People that are like, hey, I'm a supporter, but I and like this is you're ignoring this. And it's, it is like that big of a deal because I'm always someone to be like, you know what? And it does, it, it always, it always passes, right? So many people ignore me when I talk about drama and stuff that I'm not happy with. They always, people ignore me all the time. And you know what? Everything passes. Just like the James Charles thing, like Preston said in this video, you know, James Charles will eventually come back. Look at Logan Paul. He freaking came back. Look at Mel Gibson. Look at Woody Allen, which I know people keep bringing up that in my bio too. I should probably take that out. In all fairness, I, yeah, I'm changing that tonight. Um, you know, Woody Allen still freaking works. You know what I mean? Like Roman Polanski, did he do something wrong? Yeah, he did something wrong. Still works. You know, Peter Bagdanovich, who was dating Dorothy Stratton and then like started dating her underage sister, like still works. Like there are some people, Romeo Lacoste be just tattooing people still. Like it ain't nothing. Like 
I'm just like, oh, she even says that she, <laughs> I don't know why girl said this because she was like, it's not like I'm dating a pedophile. Oh, but yeah, I did go on a date with a pedophile from Tinder and then I cut it off right after I realized because I guess she posted about it online and her fans were like, um, do you not know about him and his history? So I'm just like, why did you even bring that up? One, it's not helping your case. It's making you look bad, even though, you know what, maybe you would accidentally like go on a date with someone who's shitty and then learn after the fact. But like that has nothing to do with the situation. Nothing at all to do with the situation. She brought the pedophile thing into it. I just it has nothing to do with anything. And she goes, this is her exact quote. I'm not going to apologize for not feeling comfortable for not meeting up with somebody. And you know what, Trisha? You wouldn't have to apologize for feeling that way. Nobody, not one person has ever said you're an asshole for feeling uncomfortable for meeting up with a random guy on the internet. No one has ever said that. What people are saying is that you led on a person thinking, a person who looked up to you, by the way, and I understand she might have not known who he was or what his intentions were, but she did lead him on. She set a date. She set an exact week. She said, oh, we're going to do these videos, all of this stuff, building up what they were going to hang out and do, and then just completely ignored him. That is not what someone who is uncomfortable with meeting up with a person does. If you're uncomfortable, even if you set up a date and then you become uncomfortable later, because she said, oh, people were sending me videos of him like holding a knife up to his boyfriend or something. I don't know anything about that. I feel like he does a lot of things for theatrics. He's kind of like an actor on his channel. I mean, but she said that made her feel creeped out because her fans were like, oh, you don't know this guy. He's kind of like scary online. And I'm just like, okay, you start getting second thoughts, but you message the guy and you say, you know what? I, I'm gonna rethink this, maybe we'll do it another time or something like that. Even if you don't plan on doing it another time, just be like, I can't do it this week, maybe another day. That's all she had to do. But instead, she proceeds to read these text messages and and just ignore him. And she, she even is like, oh, I was just protecting myself by messaging back to him, setting these dates and everything like that. And then he was just messaging me and messaging me and messaging me and messaging me. And I'm just sitting there going, of course he was. You guys literally set a date and he's messaging you going, okay, I bought the plane ticket to LA. Literally before he realized that she was going to ignore him. And she was like, oh, if someone's not messaging you back, you should get the, get the point. And I'm just like, yeah, if you never replied to them and set a date with them and everything like that. I mean, it's not like he knows your address. This guy lives in a different country. It's not like he lives in LA and now you're scared. She just goes through his messages, all the ones that he went through because he is now in LA and he's mess said, I messaged her once a day when I was in LA, just like hoping that, you know, something happened and I'm trying to see what is going on. And she's trying to play him off as like, oh, he's so creepy and he won't leave me alone and get the hint. And I'm like, you literally set a date with him, got this guy to fly across the world to meet with you and you want him to get the hint. It's not like you set a coffee date, just didn't show up to that, which that is still shitty, but he literally flew across the freaking world. I'm just like, it's a little different when you set someone up to that big of a level and she thinks it's totally normal. Uh, one of her other things that she tries to normalize her actions with and say that they're okay is the fact that she has set up many numerous uh, like work projects and collabs on YouTube. And even one time she was gonna go out to dinner with one of her best friends. I just pretty much don't text anyone back. And this has happened, I'll like freely admit this, and I mean, they can say whatever. I mean, I feel like, I'm actually, I mean, there's just so many to name. There's happened with so many people. I feel like, I'm gonna come to LA, like, let the blood soak up. Like, you know, things come up. <laughs> people have come to LA all the time. I have reached out to people. I have freaking gone to collab with people, and they just, they just don't respond. You know, they don't respond. Just, you know what? 
perfect example. I'll and like really close YouTube friend of mine who's literally my this, this amazing person that just always has my back no matter what. Like, I freaking love him. You know what? I had plans. I had plans with him for dinner and I just stopped texting back one day. That night was the most explosive like night of my life. I remember this so specifically. Like, and I was trying to like work things out with this person that I was like talking to and like he was like here in my house. And it was so explosive, and I kept trying to like postpone. I, I was texting him up, up to a point where I just couldn't postpone anymore, and I just couldn't text him back because I was like so frazzled and so out of my mind with just arguing and screaming and all this like oxygen. And so I basically just flaked, and I'm sure they, they, they probably they were at the restaurant. They probably were waiting for me at the freaking restaurant. That is so unhealthy, first of all. And second of all, you're an asshole. But she was like, and he gets it. My friend got it. And then she was saying how all these people who made work appointments with her just canceled on her, and she was totally okay with it. Like, that's just the thing. And I'm like, that is not the thing. People you surround yourself with must be assholes, and you're just okay with that. So now you think it's okay to... It is not okay to set a date with someone, work or private relationship, and then just not respond. When she's going through their messages and she was just like, yeah, we set a date and everything. And then I started getting second thoughts on it. And he kept messaging me that he was in LA and stuff. And she tries to play it off as he's like crazy or weird for doing that when you guys literally made plans to meet in LA and now you're gonna say, well, I just ignored him because I was getting freaked out. Like, no, you're the one in the wrong, not him. Stop trying to make it seem like he's some crazy stalker fan who isn't getting the hint. When you told him, yeah, fly across the fucking world and come meet me and we're gonna do a collab. Like, no, you're not in the right, Trisha. And it's totally okay for you to feel freaked out. I think every single woman on earth relates to that. But this is not how you handle things. You don't. If you don't feel comfortable, you cancel with the person. You don't just ghost them. And it's even more different because she was the one in power. She's the big famous YouTuber and he's just a little fan who looks up to her. It's totally different than like ghosting someone on Tinder where you're like, I don't know, this guy could be a rapist or something. Even that is kind of, is shitty to not say, hey, I can't go, but it's on a different level when you hold the power you have more money when you're the one in power and this other person looks up to you it's just it's not okay and she's totally not in the right in my opinion she's trying to pull the little victim card of oh i'm a woman and he made me feel nervous and i'm just like that's fine but what you did after that to calm your nerves it it, it wasn't the right way to handle it at all. So basically, Trisha doesn't think she did anything wrong. That is all I got out of this whole video. It's basically 43 minutes of her saying how she has done nothing wrong. Everything she did was with a reason and you know what, get over it because she's a flawed person. She was scared. She's this, she's that, she's had it done to her before. Like all of her reasons are just shitty reasons. And then like I, the literally the last 10 minutes of this video is her, I guess, trying to make us feel bad for her about how she's a 31 year old woman and just broke up with Jason. And now she has to start over again. And like she wants to find a man and get married and have kids and be loved and it's like, what the hell does that have to do with you being shitty towards another person? I honestly, I don't, I've been under fire for literally, literally everything in the world. I, I'm not a perfect person. Stuff from my past will always freaking haunt me. Like, I'm just doing my best. I'm just trying to live my life. Who knows how freaking last long YouTube's gonna last? Who knows how long I'm gonna last? Like, I know I'm a freaking good person. I know I'm a good person. I know I'm so flawed as... I'm never, I'm never going, I said, I'm scared I'm never going to find someone else. I said, I'm scared I'm never going to like get over this. I'm scared I'm never going to like find help for myself. I'm scared that I'm never going to be like able to handle emotions in a in manner, you know? Oh, if you're, I'll never, you know, I want to get married and I want to have kids one day and like, you know, and, but to, maybe my time, maybe that's not going to happen for me. For me to find anybody that I remotely am interested in or attracted to, trying to be like, I don't think that guy's hot. Like, I can, okay, that person's good looking. I think everyone's, you know, good looking. But I, I don't find anyone really, I'm not really attracted to anyone until, like, I love them. It's really weird. And then I become, like, obsessed. So maybe it's a little, little crazy, but. The only thing, reason she brings this up is because it's like, oh, I want to humanize myself and make me look so sad and, and like, oh, y'all should feel bad for me. Like, she's literally just trying to gain sympathy points from us. And I see right through it. 
honestly, you know what? I hope that she gets married and gets what she wants in life, but that has nothing to do with this. This could have been solved so easily, so easily. What I find funny is <laughs> maybe Trisha doesn't watch YouTube except for like, I really remember her saying in one of her like last videos that she loves social media. It's more entertaining than TV, than this, than that, than magazines and books. She loves social media and YouTube and all of that. So if that's her number one form of entertainment like she was implying, then how does she not know other YouTubers? But this is what I think is funny. She makes this 43 minute video of trash and if she didn't learn anything, she says she doesn't know Nick Akato Avocado, but she also says, I know he does mukbangs and then he talks about drama every now and then, which implies to me that she saw his videos about Veronica Wang and those videos were so good and well thought out. Like Nick Akato Avocado is really good at putting all the facts together, showing all the facts and stating his side of the story with facts and he even says that he's like i'd like to disprove people with facts i don't like to just say my opinion especially if it's not true and trisha likes to imply that she doesn't watch youtube and all of this but then she says like she knows he's known for like drama and mukbangs so it makes me think that she watched his videos about veronica wang and i'm just like girl if you watch those videos about veronica wang how are you going to come on for 43 minutes without just saying, I messed up. I, I should have handled this better. I got scared. And I know like that's not an excuse for my actions, but that's why I did them. And I'm sorry for it. Instead, she just tries to make herself feel better. And I know Nick is going to respond to this. I think he already did respond to this. I'm not sure, but... um. He's going to tear every little point apart and invalidate it completely with facts and just talk about like, basically like, what are you talking about? None of this has anything to do with what happened. Like a lot of this has nothing. She's just deflecting with the pedophile thing and she's deflecting with the, oh, I just broke up thing and I'm going through a heartbreak. And it's like, girl, you broke up two months ago. You should be doing a little better by now. I'm sorry. You should be doing a little better by now. I don't know if Trisha is so blind to not realize that she did wrong or if she just doesn't see it or doesn't care. I'm I'm not sure. I feel like she's a difficult person to read because you don't know if she's acting or trolling or being serious in a lot of her videos. I mean, I feel like she is, if anything, you could call her an actor. But I do know for a fact that Nick Akato Avocado is, um, I mean, he's gonna... <laughs> rip her little apology she didn't even really apologize she did at the end she was like i'm sorry if i made you feel this way and that is the that is the worst apology i hate it when people say i'm sorry if i made you feel because it's taking the burden off of them and it's putting the burden on the person who felt a certain way and it's saying like i'm sorry i made you feel that way but you still feel that way because of yourself and your feelings so it's really not my fault like i hate that type of apology and it's just if you are offended by this i'm sorry if you're triggered by it i'm sorry you know like we all get triggered by things if this is your trigger then i truly am sorry but i'm not sorry for having my opinion and like protecting myself and not wanting you know if you don't want to clap with someone even if you don't feel uncomfortable let's say you say you change your mind you can do it and how you react and respond to that is your choice um, she, she talks about how she made that cameo, which kind of like brought all this drama up again because Nick Akato Avocado, you know, it was for him and everything. And she said, I would not have made the cameo if I thought I was in the wrong at all. So clearly right there, she admits that she thinks she's in the right. She doesn't think she's in the wrong at all, at all. She thinks she's totally right. And I'm just like... Oh, you're not in the right. I'm totally all for like, do not meet up with creepy men if you, they creep you out or scare you. And booked a cameo from me for him. So uh, this, I thought this was maybe the, the I, obviously you don't have to do cameos. You know, you, you decline that shit if you want. He said exactly what it was for. And I was like, you know what? This is probably a time he said, uh, he asked me to say something that I liked about him and something that I didn't like about him. And I said, hey, you know, we have this drama and we both know like, 
And someone, I had saw, seen a video or a comment or something of someone saying like, you know, in that she was very vague. You could tell like she, there was some shit that went down that she wasn't going to acknowledge. I'm like, I just want to have even made this if I was, if I thought I was in this wrong app in any way. If I thought I was in the wrong, I like obviously wouldn't have made this video. Like there's a way to handle it because not every man that even that creeps you out is going to do something to you. And I just, I'm looking at these messages and I'm like, she can't be as dumb as she puts off, right? She can't be that dumb. Trish is not a dumb woman. She plays dumb. I think that's it. She's not stupid. She knows why he messaged her over and over and over again. And it's because she let him on and said, yeah, let's meet. And this dude is in LA, a city he's never been to, kind of like wandering around. It's like, it's all your fault. And what is so funny is Trisha like mentions one of the exact reasons that Nick waited so long to come out with these receipts. She said, that's fine. If he wants attention, then I guess he's going to get some attention. And I'm just like, he literally waited until he had over almost 2 million subscribers to bring this up. So people cannot invalidate him and say, oh, you're just a small YouTuber looking for clout and, you know, want people to be looking at you and talking about you and attention. And she literally says the exact thing. Like, Nikocado Avocado doesn't need Trisha Paytas to get attention. He has millions of people who care about his videos and care about him and watch him for his content. When everyone is telling you that you did something wrong, it's usually for a good reason. And it's not just because people like to band together to be evil and hate on someone. Everyone is telling Trisha, even her fans. I saw a comment the other day where this girl said, I first subscribed to you when I was 10 years old and that was 12 years ago. I'm now 22 and I just unsubscribed because you're not the person that I thought you were and I looked up to you and I'm just like, this person was a fan and liked Trisha for 12 years years that's a long time and someone like that would not just say oh i don't like you anymore for no reason especially to someone that they cared about and i get her thinking she's in the right for feeling uncomfortable and not wanting to put herself in that situation but trisha you are not in the right with the way that you handled it and you're still not handling it correctly you're deflecting you're putting the blame on others and you're saying look there's predators and rapists and pedophiles out there so like in comparison what I did isn't that bad and it's like yeah that's true but you still did something shitty so those are kind of all of my thoughts on this whole scenario let me know in the comments below what you think about Trisha Paytas's apology <laughs> I really hope this video kind of made sense her long 43 minute video was difficult to wade through and I had to write certain timestamps down and I hope that I get all the clips that I wanted in the video. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I was not even expecting to upload a video today so you guys got an extra upload for this week. So that's fun. I mean, there's a lot of drama going on. So I am actually having a lot of fun filming these videos. I really love filming the highlight and shade videos and I know you guys like them too. Um, so. I think Nick did respond to this video and I'm gonna watch that one. I don't think I'm gonna make a response to that one. Um, but if he did, I will link his video below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, wait, I didn't even put setting spray. What are you doing, girl?